Hello, and welcome back to another Monster Monday, a series where I draw a creature from D&D, and I talk about its lore and its history, and what it's like to fight in-game as well. These videos are based on your suggestions that you leave down in the comments section below, so if you have creatures that you'd like to see me draw, make sure to leave those down below, and I'll add them to my to-draw list. But then they're voted on by my patrons over on Patreon, who get to pick which monsters I do next, and this week's is no different. My patrons have voted to see Bone Devils today, and although a lot of people have requested this video, the first person was Mitchell Harder in the YouTube comments. Now before I carry on with today's video, I feel like I should say thank you for your patience, and I'm sorry for my prolonged absence. I took some time off, pretty much out of nowhere, because I had stressed myself out. I'd stressed myself out so much that I had sort of ruined my immune system, and had developed shingles, um, my doctor informed me, which apparently no one under their 50s really should be getting, especially not someone who's not even in their 30s yet. So I was signed off sick from work, and that included the work that I do here on YouTube, but I won't bore you with the details. I think I may make a separate video on a Friday coming up, where I talk a little bit about my absence and, and also about the channel, things like that, to explain in more depth. But either way, I need to take life a little bit more easy, but I'm still glad to be back. I also have to thank uh, one of my patrons, Rappletech, who is one of my very, very dearest friends, also known as Joe, who uh, we can thank for the fact that I'm making digital drawings again. In my last Monster Monday, the unicorn video, you will have noticed that I was doing some ink drawings because my drawing pad um, actually broke and I needed to get a new one, but I hadn't got the funds. Many of you were kind enough to offer me replacement tablets um, and support when I had damaged my own one, which is unbelievable. Um, in particular, Nicholas Kocher, C-O-U-T-U-R-E, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that name right, offered to send me their tablet all the way from Canada, and a few others were kind enough to offer similar things. Rappletech is actually one of my very, very dearest friends, and he lives only a few streets away from me, and happened to have a tablet spare he wasn't using, and offered to give that to me so that I could carry on with my work. So thank you very much to Rappletech and to everybody else who offered their support and offered to help me with finding a replacement tablet. If you had told me when I first started YouTube that people would be offering to help me and support me while I make this channel, I probably wouldn't have believed you, but you guys are absolutely fantastic and some of the nicest people that I've ever seen in a comment section. So thank you very much for following my work and for all of your lovely support and help. But anyway, I think I've rambled for long enough now. Let's get started with today's video. So Bone Devils, which are also known as Ozziluths in D&D, are known as Lesser Devils. They joined the game in 1977's Monster Manual, where they looked like kind of skeletal, ape-like creatures with dragonfly wings and huge, sort of barbed, I would say a scorpion's tail attached at the base of their spine, and a kind of curved, hooked, polearm-like weapon that looked like a massive fisherman's hook that you might find in, let's say, Bloodborne. With later editions, the interpretation of this creature became more refined, and, you know, it never completely changed. It always had elements of that initial idea, but in 5th edition, these guys are some of my favourite creatures in terms of the design and artwork. An artist by the name of Philip Berberon, a well-known artist for Magic the Gathering card game and other similar sort of fantasy art, created a hunched, spined, ghostly monstrosity whose gaunt and kind of haunting gait definitely pays homage to the original artwork for these creatures, while throwing in some of his own flair and adding some kind of almost like xenomorph style features as well. Bone devils, as I've mentioned before, are known as lesser devils, which is not to say that they're weak in any capacity. These towering nine foot monsters are a challenge rating nine, have 19 AC, and 15 D10 plus 60 HP, so they're definitely not an easy target for adventurers. But lesser refers to their rank in devil society, which it turns out exists. Unlike demons, devils are all lawful characters in terms of their alignment. They, and almost all devils, see themselves as part of a cosmic order, an inherent balance to the universe. They recognize themselves as evil creatures, yes, but a necessary evil for the fabric of reality. This lawfulness pervades every facet of a devil's life. And in this society, there are four major ranks. Lemures, not to be confused with lemurs, are the lowest form of devils, 
which are the corrupted souls of evil people who have died, mortals. Lesser devils, like our bone devil friend, who occupy the majority of devil species. Greater devils, kind of officers, your generals in a sort of de devil army. And arch devils, rulers, let's say, of all of devil kind. If we were to put that in the kind of feudal system, almost like the kind that we have in, let's say, Game of Thrones, then lemurs would be the kind of peasants or paupers. Lesser devils might be the foot soldiers or servants of the noble houses. A greater devil might be anyone of noble blood, let's say a lord, your Sansas, your Arias, your Rob Starks. And arch devils would be the heads of those houses, Ned Stark, Robert Baratheon, Tywin Lannister, this kind of thing. Now naturally, bone devils are ambitious creatures, but they know that loyalty and obedience are the only things keeping the order of the universe in check. Often they can't resist striving for power, bargaining with cultists to gain followers, forming plots and schemes to gain them more influence, but ultimately they have to stay in their prescribed place in devil society for the good of the blood war, an eternal conflict between devils and demons. Now each side in this war believes in the virtues of either order or chaos, and they must fight for the survival of this concept. In reality, however, this eternal conflict is just a stalemate or a truce. But that doesn't stop certain devils or certain demons believing that they can sway the tide of conflict in one way or another, and bone devils are particularly susceptible to this idea. They're incredibly envious of their superiors, and are the most susceptible out of all of their kin to the idea of aspiration. They're by far the strongest and fiercest of the lesser devils, and believe themselves deserving of the status of a greater devil. And this might be because, unlike all the other devils, these are empowered by the nearest hint of the seven deadly sins. They're drawn to mortals, therefore, often making pacts with them because those committing sins literally fuels them. They can't help but rush in to take pacts with desperate cultists and others in dire need of demonic or devil-like power, which they wish to desperately lord over their devil brethren. They wish to display their increased might but unbeknownst to them, they are in a constant stalemate no matter what, because with all bone devils operating in a similar, similar level, a similar mindset, no matter how hard they strive, there is always another bone devil stronger than them, with more followers, more cultists, and a balance between them all is always struck. Functionally, in devil society, they often act as informants of the Nine Hells, the planes in which devils reside, because they're so eager to prove their usefulness to their superiors. They cannot resist the notion that their aiding their superiors might earn them a promotion to see them rise above their peers, but this promotion will never come. And it's a good thing too, because these creatures are already pretty scary. They're a challenge rating nine creature, and on top of looking like your absolute worst nightmares, they can use those horrifying insect wings to fly 40 feet, but they can also gallop 40 feet on land as well. They have 18 strength and constitution, and 16 charisma and dexterity. They've got 14 wisdom, and their lowest stat is their 13 in intelligence. They've got plus seven in deception, and plus six in insight, so they're more than clever enough to make bargains and pacts with mortals. They're resistant to cold damage, being that they live in a very hostile, and likely molten environment, and all mundane weapons, i.e. ones that aren't magical in nature, and aren't silvered. They're immune to fire and poison, and their beady little glowing eyes grant them 120 foot dark vision. To aid them in their need to form pacts, they speak infernal, but they are also telepathic up to 120 feet. Like most devils and demons, they have resistance to magic effects, granting them advantage on saving throws against spells, and their horrendous barbed tails aren't just for show. They can make three attacks per round, two with their gaunt, elongated hands, and one with that massive sting. Their limbs are so long that they have a 10-foot reach with their hands, and they deal 1d8 plus 4 slashing damage, but the sting is the real deadly part of these creatures. It deals 2d8 plus 4 piercing damage, 
plus an additional 5d6 poison damage. Players stung by this thing need to pass a constitution saving throw, otherwise they count as having the poisoned condition, which is a gruesome thing to be able to do every single round. In addition to all that, if you are a fan of first edition and you are hankering for the old-fashioned bone devil with its kind of fish hook polearm thing, helpfully in the rules we're given a variant of the bone devil where it can make a uh, multi-attack this time with two attacks rather than three it can do one with this polearm and one with its sting and the polearm does 2d12 plus four piercing damage and it also grapples the target i imagine skewering it in them perhaps one of these d12s is the stab part and another d12 is the ripping out part and someone is stuck to the barbed end of this horrendous polearm but anyway guys that pretty much wraps it up for the bone devil one of the scariest and coolest looking monsters in D&D, in my opinion, and definitely one that's going to come up if your players are using cultists and playing warlocks. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to leave a little thumbs up, a little like down below, maybe favourite this video, and share it with your friends in case the rest of your party is likely to come up against some bone devils in their next adventure. Make sure to hit the subscribe button as well to see more videos like this every single week. I've been stocking up on all of my drawings and my research, so I should be ready to go with a lot more consistent videos out every single Monday, and some videos out on Friday as well. If you love this drawing in particular and you'd like a copy for yourself, or you'd like to support the channel in another way, in a more personal way, and have the opportunity to vote on which monsters I draw next for next month, make sure to head over to my Patreon page, where backers get rewards like all of my drawings that I do each month, more videos, live streams, and things like one-on-one -on -one chats. Until next time, guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you're committing a lot of sins, keep an eye out in the darkness for nine-foot flying scorpion demons, because it may just be a bone devil. And until next time, happy monster hunting. Yeah.